The impossible has happened. Sonic the Hedgehog is now on Super NES. Well, kind of. So, a coder over on the Nest Dev forums known as Tiago SC has just released this demo of Sonic the Hedgehog running on Super NES, and it's so bizarre and interesting to see that I had to bring Richard Ledbetter in here to discuss this immediately. Yeah, this is fascinating, isn't it? Hell has frozen over. This just shouldn't be happening. This is against the laws of nature itself. <laughs> it truly feels that way. After all, <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog was an exclusive game for the Sega Mega Drive back in the day, and I think it was absolutely crucial to its success in the marketplace, and its speed was used heavily in the marketing. Blast processing was trotted out, and... We did demonstrate, with the help of Gabriel Morales, that blast processing does exist, but it wasn't used in Sonic. That's not what made this game fast. Uh, so yeah, this is just a crazy, crazy thing to see. I just don't know where to begin. This just came what? completely out of left field. <laughs> I know. And uh, yeah, fascinating, isn't it? It kind of puts into perspective a lot of the discussions we've been having recently about first-party games, but maybe we'll talk about that later. Let's just talk about the uh, the tech demo here and see what it's all about to begin with. Yeah, so we found this over on, like I said, the Nest Dev forums, and this is based on the original game. Uh, the, the programmer, Tiago, noted that the the disassembly of the original games that you can find over on Sonic Retro really helped him figure this out. And he's really just developing his own sort of game engine. And this was just a demo, so to speak. But he basically remade Green Hill Zone Act 3 completely uh, without the boss at the end. So <laughs> I guess first, you know, what made this game impressive at the time is the fact, really, it comes down to... Uh, Yuji Naka was able to program a very fast scrolling game. It's loading tiles and sprites in and out of screen area at a very high speed for the time. We really hadn't seen much like this. But then this is combined, of course, with the beautiful parallax scrolling, which is kind of a staple of the 16-bit era. But what really separates Sonic, it's the physics. Those calculations used to uh, allow Sonic to have real momentum and react with slopes in a realistic way. That's probably one of the most demanding elements in the game. Okay, right. And all of this is in this SNES demo then? Yes, and that's what's amazing. So, first of all, um, it does kind of work like the original game according to what Tiago's written over there on the forum. Uh, he's still using the sort of 128 pixel border uh, as sort of a buffer zone to load in new tiles and sprites. But one of the changes that was made, it seems like, is that the actual, I guess the meta tiles are, the, are used to build up the sprites. It's reduced its size, so they're actually using more sprites per object, maybe. Uh, which then, you're basically filling up your sprite list faster and harder, which then has more of a CPU impact. And that's why there are there is a little bit more slowdown in this than the actual mega drive game not it's it's very smooth but you'll definitely notice some instances where it drops so that's mm -hmm. interesting they, they did handle that differently that also there is some missing frames of animation on certain enemies and all that but again nothing major it's just a small tech demo so it can be forgiven but it's interesting to see how he changed his approach to handling the objects here i'm just i'm still kind of just blown away by by the basic concepts that a major first party exclusive for the Sega Genesis back in the day, it, which shouldn't be running on the Super Nintendo. This is the power of marketing. Yeah. Uh, but it is. But it, I think it is quite interesting that there are cutbacks, there are changes, there are adjustments uh, to the port that had to be made. And um, it's not running quite as well. I mean, I guess we shouldn't be too judgmental no. because fundamentally this is a tech demo. And uh, <laughs> but even still, it is interesting just to see. I mean, you've covered a lot of the Super Nintendo versus Genesis ports on on DF Retro, so it does look like there is some commonality in some of the changes and compromises that had to be made. Yeah, so obviously some of the Super NES uh, limitations, if you call them that, are evident. For instance, the resolution of most Super NES games it's two fifty six by two twenty four. Whereas the Mega Drive game uses 320 by 224, which is obviously more pixels at once. And this translates with pixel art as more visible, uh, I guess, screen real estate. You can see more. Like right <laughs> at the beginning here of the stage, you'll see when Sonic's just standing there, 
all the sprites and tiles are stretched slightly horizontally and you can only see three palm trees at a time uh on the super nes there but you see four of them and the springboard on the mega drive and it's also the true with the boss area the boss is not implemented on this version but you can see both platforms fit on the mega drive screen uh, but they don't on the super nes so there's a little bit of this scrolling where when you're facing one direction or another the camera kind of moves either left or right to help you see further ahead i guess which is kind of a neat little trick but then there is some benefit obviously the super nes has a wider color palette and he's taken advantage of that and i think the thing i really liked the most was it seems to be using dma on the sky to create this sort of a gradient effect so it's a deeper blue at the top and goes to a lighter blue as it goes towards the hills which is cool and the mountains and the clouds uh, they always looked separate but they kind of scroll more separately this time as if it's like two background layers perhaps instead of just one with uh, uh, interrupts dividing up the the layers so that's that's kind of neat as well mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just kind of chuckling about the uh, about the resolution thing because you don't have to pixel count. <laughs> you just see th that it's physically a smaller window that's showing less of the actual environment. <laughs> this was a this was a real problem with games back then. Developed if they were developed for like one or the other, uh, you know, pixel art. It's not easy to just change it all to fit one or the other because you're dealing with so few pixels in the first place. So they would just translate it between the two. And you'd either end up with fat sprites on the Super NES, or I guess thin sprites on the Genesis slash Mega Drive. Though I guess at least Sega's system actually does support a 256 wide pixel mode. Uh, so it can do both, unlike Super NES. So that is useful sometimes, I suppose. But I guess the, the sound was another interesting thing I thought, was that he's using the XM tracker format, which is very popular on like the Amiga and even used on the PC sometimes. And it generates music that sounds like this. So yeah, I mean, it's it's different, but it sounds good. Now, he, he hasn't implemented any sound effects yet and kind of noted in some of the posts that working with the SPC 700 was actually perhaps the most frustrating part of the project just due to crashing and you really had to treat it with finesse, it sounds like, which is something interesting to hear. But I guess the, the coup de gras here uh, is the physics code. And there are some changes to it, I guess. The calculations are handled ever so slightly differently. Uh, but functionally, it works very much as it does on the Sega system, which is cool to see. I was trying to line up things and see how he responds to the different hills and slopes, and it's all very, very similar. It really feels very much like Sonic, which is awesome. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. So, you know, I've got to ask this question. Let's go back in time to the John Linneman that was uh, in entranced by Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on the on the Genesis, on the Mega Drive. And then what, what, what would have the John back then thought of this? <laughs> I th That's a very interesting question, actually. I, I don't know. It's... Do you think it would have upended the whole marketing arguments at the time or would it have just given more fuel to the fire? Oh man, I, I can't, I think people would have, you know, we've seen how console wars get, and even back then they existed, though they tended to be a little more pleasant, but it was, people were still, it was playground arguments, I think it would have definitely triggered some sort of uh, explosion from certain people. Myself, uh, I mean, I probably, I, I probably would have enjoyed it, because I still, I played both systems back then, I love them both, even though I do prefer the Genesis, but... I think it's a very weird thing to have seen and it's something that I couldn't have comprehended at the time because you know that's what exclusives were all about back then so <laughs> the idea at the time of Sega and Sonic on Super NES just seemed absurd but then again I guess it's not that crazy because I mean Tengen brought some of Sega's uh, games to the NES you had like a poor version of Shinobi uh, stuff like that brought over 
So, you know, it, there was a precedent for it, but Sega itself, I'm not sure we would have seen. And I kind of, and we've seen plenty of this kind of transplant stuff with like Chinese hack games. Like there's the, uh, there is like Sonic the Hedgehog based on that uh, Speedy Gonzalez game, for instance. It's very different, but that that's an old pirate <laughs> cart that's been floating around for a long time. But seeing something recreated in this way, it's really fascinating. And I, but I have to wonder if the whole game could be done, because they're right. uh, probably. But you know, some of the, especially the later games, the, there are some complex effects, and I don't know. I, I would love to see more of this brought over, just to see what's truly possible. Mm. So I'm looking at your notes here, and it says that Tiago SC notes that the 68,000 CPU in the Mega Drive, 40 to 70 percent faster, based on his estimates for certain calculations. So this could potentially cause issues uh, if you're spotting it in a tech demo uh, and I'm kind of wondering if they could possibly use a map or something to overcome some of that yeah that's that's a good point I, I wonder I mean yeah he's just that's based on his own experience I suppose and I always like to hear what different programmers think about these machines having worked with them because depending on what type of calculations you're trying to do what you're trying to do with it I guess it can kind of vary but yeah in this case I'd imagine that any issues that might exist could be cleared up by using like the SA1 chip or even the Super FX mm. chip, something like that, just to offload calculations <laughs> to another more powerful chip. Uh, and then that's what allowed something like Yoshi's Island to exist in such an impressive form. So why did why did he do this? Do we have any insight as to why he did this? Is it just yeah. curiosity? Or according to him, he's de he's developing a game engine to create his own game, uh, and trying to get that momentum and the feel of Sonic down, but with its, own, you know, obviously with its own style, I suppose. And this is kind of a good way to test your engine is just to use art that already exists. And yeah, it's probably a very good learning experience as well. So uh, I, you know, I just love seeing what the community can do in this and seeing what amateur developers can pull off. And uh, it's it's an enjoyable find i must say like it's it's crazy but <laughs> it's so cool like I, I just love this kind of stuff and i'd like to see more of the inverse as well like what would super mario world like if somebody really tried to duplicate that on the mega drive what would that look like and i'm sure audi's on top of the cdi port as we speak oh yeah that, that'll probably <laughs> run at 10 frames a second though <laughs> Brilliant. I just love the enthusiasm here, John, because uh, it's Saturday afternoon here. We should be sort of powering down, relaxing a bit, but you just saw this, had to do something on it, had to get a video out there. And yeah, it's just one of those things, you know, just, <laughs> this kind of stuff pops up. I, I was just, you know, working on something else this morning, then Audi pops up and he's like, hey, dude, look at this. And I click on it. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> and on to my... Uh, SD to SNES that ROM went, loaded it up on a real Super NES, and it just works. So, man, great stuff all around. And it even has some debug tools. You can hit start and kind of move the camera around freely, which is fun. And uh, you can kind of appreciate some of the details. I mean, I love how they got all the different parallax layers in there. They do the line scrolling effect. It's all based on the Japanese version of the game of Sonic 1, which for those that don't know, uh, the Japanese release has more parallax scrolling, or at least more detail in it. They actually brought in line scrolling for all the different layers, which is absent in the original Western release of the game. So it's wow. actually a better version if you got the Japanese copy. <laughs> uh, and that's what the Super NES visuals seem to be based on, which is cool. But yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a thing. It's out there. Um, definitely worth keeping an eye, an eye on, I guess. I mean, I, I don't think he's going to actually finish this up into an actual game but uh i'll certainly be watching to see what he does in the future because uh, you know creating new engines for these old systems and then building something new with it i love this stuff mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah well who knows maybe 20 years from now we'll be seeing uh, horizon zero dawn running on xbox one <laughs> maybe so <laughs> now let's get into some crazy complex territories but yeah like you said i mean <laughs> one of the key things about uh, this whole console exclusivity stuff. I mean, it's been coming up a lot lately. I get it, but I really, I think this example was one that 
Sonic being made by Sega for their system exclusively basically made Sega at the time. It was the key factor that helped them succeed in the West. And I don't think that this being a multi-platform game from the beginning would have ever had the same kind of impact. It wouldn't have moved that Sega hardware. This was the thing that made the system seem cool and fast. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. I guess we're going to have to uh, sort of put aside the whole first party discussion for now because it just seems to be spiraling completely out of control. But yeah, it is fascinating to see this particular epoch making game for the Sega Genesis, the Sega Mega Drive running on Super Nintendo. We had to get some video content out about it. That's right. So yeah, I guess that's that's all there is for this one, especially since there's only one level. So <laughs> thanks for joining me, Rich. My pleasure. And if you guys enjoyed this, as always, be sure to like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, all that good stuff and more. And until next time, stay retro.